My name is Michelle. I married my husband Ben eight years ago. We have a son Brian who is one years old and expecting a second one. We didn't have a baby for a while. After six years of marriage, a long-awaited pregnancy, and now the second one in a row. Even it's pretty busy. We are happy. However, since we had Brian, Ben's mother Eliza started to spam me tons of messages regarding her grandson Brian. Things were peaceful, and we were happy about our marriage. After three years passed, she blames us not having a child every day. So since Brian was born, she sends me tons of angry messages to get to know how her grandson is doing. Also, Eliza and my father-in-law are still in good health. She wanted to see Brian and even brought up the idea of moving in together. Ben protected me and was able to avoid her proposal, but still, I was really overwhelmed by the over-interference. I don't want to be too obnoxious and get into trouble, so I was trying to get by. She was so persistent. That I was nearing the end of my patience. Not to mention, the day began with another message from Eliza. Michelle, I haven't seen you guys lately. How is Brian? Hi, we are good. Sorry, I haven't been able to visit you. A lot of things are going on. If you guys are fine, why are you not coming over? I'd be worried if someone got sick or something. I have many things to do, but I'll talk to Ben about it, and we'll come visit you next week. Yes, you should. Brian will forget about me if we don't see each other this long. I want to see Ben and Brian. Of course. Eliza doesn't care about how I feel at all. She texts me if we don't show up for a week. No, it's not. Even if we went over to see her, she texts me almost every day. I haven't heard from you at all. Are boys doing well? I wish you'd call me sometimes. I am sorry, Eliza. I didn't notice your message because I was busy. If you don't answer my messages right away, I'll start worrying about what's going on. If something happened to Ben and Brian, I won't be able to live. Nothing happened. They are all right. I was busy a little bit. What's with that tone? You make it sound like I have time on my hands. That's not what I meant. You're a stay-at-home mom. You should be the one who has time on your hands. What's keeping you so busy? I need to watch Brian and do housework. Kids today are so quick to make excuses like that. You are a mom and supposed to take care of your kids. Back in my days, we had more kids. No one complained that they were busy. You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, and if you're always busy, I'd be worried about having a second one if you were like that. If it's that hard, I'll go help you. I appreciate it, but I will be fine. I said I was busy, but we are doing okay. What? Would it bother you if I go and help you? No, 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 not like that. But it's different from your house. What are you talking about? Housework is your part, isn't it? You are dull. I'll take care of Brian for you, so you can do the housework. I can manage it, really. So thank you so much. Well, Eliza must have a lot of free time. She doesn't have things to say, but often texts me like this. She is so annoying. After Brian was born, the situation gradually got worse. I can't even get housework finished. I am worried that I'd go crazy if she goes this way once the second one is born. Michelle, is it around Brian's nap time? Can you send me a picture of his sleeping face? Michelle, hey, Michelle. I was putting Brian down to sleep, but my phone was noisy because of your text, and they woke him up. So I can't send you a picture. I'm sorry. What? Are you saying that it's my fault? No, I am not saying like that. Isn't it your fault that you leave the phone so close to him? But I wanted to keep it close to me so I can reply to you ASAP. Then turn the sound off. Okay, I am sorry. And that night. Hey, is he sleeping? Has Brian gone to bed already? Still no pictures of his sleeping face. Hello, I am texting you now. I am sorry. I was putting him down to bed. You always notice it later. It makes me worry about him. You suggested me to turn the sound off the other day so Brian can fall asleep without interruptions. So you want to say you didn't notice it because of me? No. Please send me a picture of his sleeping face as soon as possible. I have been waiting so long. I am sorry. I just left him on the bed. He hasn't slept yet, and I still need to clean and do the laundry or more things to do. So I will be out of phone rest of the day. I'm just asking you to send me a picture. What a cold person you are! This exchange happens almost every day. Eliza was angry with my early response. It escalated further. Hello, how is Brian? He is good. He is playing with the toy car Ben bought him the other day. You're so ungenerous. I want you to send me those pictures. I am sorry I didn't realize that. I'll take one now and send it to you.
Oh my dear, he is adorable. He grows so fast when you don't see him. Yes, they grow up so fast. But Michelle, isn't the room so messy? I've taken out a lot of toys and stuff and it's just a mess. Is it his fault that the room is being messy? It's not, right? I am not saying it's because of Brian. We always clean up together after we play. I am not saying only about the toys, the laundry on the couch I am talking about. We had sudden rain in the afternoon and I took them in a bit ago. They are still wet, right? Isn't it going to be smelly if you don't dry them? You don't even know that? I was just in the middle of hanging it out to dry. What? Excuses again? Are you saying this is my fault? No, I am telling you how it is. There are Ben's and Brian's clothes too, right? If you don't try it soon, bacteria will grow and it will smell bad. Don't make Ben and Brian wear those stinky clothes. Sure, I will dry them right now. I only sent her the pictures because she asked for them. I can't believe she would go so far as to say that. She's always looking for the worst in people. And when she opens her mouth, it's for Ben and Brian. As for me, I'm sorry over and over again. I'm already mentally tired of Eliza's message attacks. Here again, another message from Eliza. Hey Michelle, are you making Ben do the shopping? I heard about it from him. What? Shopping? He is around for his work. I asked him to stop by while he was around. He said he didn't have time because he needs to do shopping. Are you asking Ben to do the shopping for you even though he's tired from work? I am sorry. I forgot to buy something and asked him to get it on his way home. You haven't been slacking on your chores or anything, right? I'm doing a great job with the housework and childcare. I've told you many times, but you are Ben's wife and I am his mother. Doing well? That's a given, right? I am sorry. And yet, you make him to go shopping after a long day at work. I wouldn't ask for something if I wasn't going to use it right away. It was powdered milk. I had to get some right away because I was out of Brian's powdered milk. Oh no, are you giving him powdered milk, not breast milk? Yes, that's right. Why are you feeding him powdered milk? Well... What are you stuck on? Why aren't you breastfeeding, I'm asking you. When I raised Ben, I breastfed him properly. Don't get comfortable with powdered milk. Breastfeed your baby. I know breastfeeding is better, but after talking to the doctor about the risk of miscarriage in the early stages of pregnancy, we decided to give him powdered milk. Again, you are saying it well. Of course you need to think about the baby, but you should put Brian and his growth first now. I heard a bang somewhere in my mind. With this one word, I was at the end of my rope. The threads that had been tightened up were snapped. If that's the case, let me tell you something. Who on earth do you think is responsible for all this? I've had enough of this. What are you talking about out of the blue? I'm Ben's mother. What a way to put things. What the hell about Ben's mother? If you were Ben's mother, you can say any way you want. What do you think I am? Hey, what are you so angry about? You are being rude. I'm concerned for you because I know you are going through a tough time. For whom are you concerned? It's not me. You are worrying about Ben and Brian. You are not worried about me just a bit. From one to the other, you complain about what I am doing. I'm worried about leaving you in charge because you are so unreliable. If you are so concerned about Ben and Brian and tell me to put the kids first, you just leave us alone. What? I'm reaching you because I can't leave you alone. You're not ready yet as a wife and mother. I know that well. There is no perfect person. Are you going to take away the process of me growing up? Do you think you are doing everything perfectly? You are not perfect either, Eliza. If you were a perfect, honorable person, you would know that I was hurt. Shouldn't you know exactly what you were talking about? Do you know how much you insulted me? If you are worried about our family, I want you to watch over us until we give you an SOS. I know I can't do it, but I'm going to try to make sure I can. What kind of mother is Ben to not be able to keep quiet and watch over that? I was chosen by your precious son, Ben, as his life partner. And by making fun of me, you are making fun of him, right? You complain about the way I do things whenever you want. You just want to see Brian because he's cute. You ignore all my feelings. You don't even admit that I'm doing my best. Your daily messages that come relentlessly are stressing me out. It's affecting my parenting. How can you not even notice that? I'm fed up with you forcing your ideas on me. I'm sick of it. Well, you're a... What's the word? Look, I know it's hard when you're raising a little one, but don't blame it all on me. Ben would be upset if you say that. Ben has been so helpful in listening to me and understanding how I feel. 
Besides, he says it's okay with me ignoring your text. What? You're kidding me. Ben never says something like that. Then ask him directly. And the reason why my breast milk stopped is the pushy text from you and criticizing and disapproving me as a wife or a mother. That's your physical problem. I had nothing to do with it. Stop false accusing me. That's not an accusation. Breast milk is directly linked to stress and I'm talking to my doctor about this. Oh no, did you even talk to the doctor about that? My plate is already full of daily routine and your texting. I had enough. I want to spend time with Ben and Brian happily, not being in a bad mood every day. Oh no, it's really because of me that you can't breastfeed? I understand how much you love Ben and Brian, Eliza. I appreciate it. That's why I want you to know how I feel. I can't let this kind of thing sabotage me. Sabotaging you. I want you to see how Brian and the second one grow in the future too. So really, just for a little while. I understand your concern, but can you hold back texting me? I want to take it slow with my pace. I feel terrified when my phone beeps every day, what you would tell me today. I didn't realize that I pushed you so hard. I will send you pictures of Brian's growth properly from me. I am sorry that I didn't think well of you because I was busy. We are a family, Eliza. We want to live our lives while building a good relationship. That night, after Ben came home, I asked Eliza to come over to my house and we discussed it. She was shocked and crying by hearing my honest thoughts, but she seems to realize that she had driven me that far, and she officially apologized me. Eliza recalled that when she was raising Ben, his grandmother told her some nasty things to her about parenting and other things. I'm glad I spoke up about my feelings, otherwise I'm sure our relationship would have remained awkward for a long time. No matter how much I knew Eliza was concerned about us, it was too much and really painful. Now everything turned out well.